Now he's ready to hit. Carson digs in. Here comes pitch number one. And a big swing from Carson. But it looks like Dalton is out there taunting a four-year-old. Can I get a boo for these party animals? Unbelievable. The count's 0-1. Pick on somebody your own size, Dalton. Strike number two. This is unbelievable. But Split says he's had enough. He's going to knock the catcher out of the way. He's going to steal the ball from Dalton Potts. The ball is going down on the tee, and now Carson has a fair fight against these party animals. Whenever you're ready, Carson. Boom! That ball's hit into right field. Carson does a big bat flip, and he's just watching it. And now he's off to the races. Here comes the throw to first. Bryson Bloomer gets smoked, and Carson is pulling up Forrest Gump, and he's headed out of the stadium. Just kidding. He's just taking a big round around first. This is the most interesting base path I have ever seen in my 20 years of baseball. Carson has went from first to third, and now he's on his way to second base. You do whatever you want, Carson. This is the best home run I've ever seen. He's on his way to second base. He's going to be safe in second. Make some noise for Carson. Get on your feet, ladies and gentlemen. He's rounding the bases. He's headed to first base. And now he is on his way home. Get on your feet. Make some noise for Carson. Bryson Bloomer's trolley falls down. Here comes the throw home. Carson's looking back. The throw to the plate. What's going to happen? Oh, my goodness. Carson, where are you going? And, oh, Don Ponce falls down. And get on your feet. He's headed home, ladies and gentlemen. Carson is running. He's mumbling, tumbling, stumbling, saving the play. Are you not entertained? All right, ladies and gentlemen, now it's time to learn the rules of our game. The name of the game is Banana Ball, and in Banana Ball, we have 11 rules. Rule number one, every inning counts. You win the inning, you get a point. How do you win the inning? Score more runs than the other team. The final inning counts the most, where every run counts for a point. Rule number two, we have nine innings or a two-hour time limit, unless Rule number three, if we are tied, it will force a one-on-one -on -one showdown tiebreaker. One hitter versus one pitcher with one fielder. Rule number four, there is no bunting because bunting sucks. If you bunt, you are thrown out of the game. Swing the bat. Rule number five, batters can steal first base. Rule number six, there are no walks in banana ball. Ball four is a sprint. The runner can go as far as they want till all nine fielders touch the ball. Rule number seven, batters may not step outside of the batter's box. If they do, he'll call it a strike. Rule number eight, there are no mound visits. Rule number nine, the banana ball challenge rule. During the game, each team has an opportunity to challenge one close umpire call per game. And not only do they get to challenge a call, but you the fans do as well. Your fan challenge representative sitting up top tonight. Give it up for Tristan. Rule number 10, the golden batter rule. Once per game, each team can take any hitter in their lineup to bat in any spot. And finally, the most fans first rule of them all. Savannah, did you bring your gloves tonight? That's good because if any of you fans catch a foul ball in this game, it counts for an out. And those are the rules of Banana Ball. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a face-off between the Savannah Bananas and the party animals. This is called the Tortilla Slap Challenge. The Bananas are sending Danny Overs. Mike Mavasis, player coach, is up in the box for the party animals. It works like this. They fill their mouths with water and they take turns slapping each other ferociously with tortillas until one of them breaks and spits the water out. Vince, I'm gonna let you call the action on this one. The party animals get to bat first, so party animals get to hit first, and Mike Mavasis slaps the tortilla in half. Oh, oh a vicious slap. 
This is getting intense down here. <laughs> it's Swing and a miss. But here comes Danny Overs. <laughs> Almost. They are still maintaining their composure. Ah. Tie game. Vicious flows. Give it up for the bananas and party animals. An unreal <laughs> tortilla snap no, challenge. And before that, if we thought that our buddy Walt from up in Gwinnett County put on an unbelievable show as the home run hitter, holy moly, we could have never expected the shenanigans that Carson right here in Savannah was going to break that break. <laughs> I mean, that, that was a performance unlike any I've seen in my five seasons of broadcasting. That here. kid is a scallywag right there. Yeah. He just... He lived for the show. He lived for the moment. He didn't care where he was going to run. He just wanted to run. Um, it was like Forrest Gump out there. The first base he touched was third. Then went back to second, first, then back to third, finally to home. Uh, that was one of my favorite moments I have seen on the tour thus far. Uh, to talk about Gwinnett a little bit more and the legend that is our dolphin diving home run hitter, Walt, uh, it was offense bonanza. There were uh, it just an unbelievable output of runs this past weekend. Yeah, I mean, we might have seen the most prolific offensive weekend in banana ball history. And, of course, we've got to commend the party animals winning their first series since opening weekend in Tampa Bay. But we saw six home runs over the three games in Gwinnett County. And you look at the home run leaderboard right now, Eric Jones Jr. leading all players. But the top four guys you see here, all went deep in Gwinnett County last weekend. And in total, we saw 59 runs scored across three games. That's combined between the Bananas and Party Animals, meaning these games were averaging almost 19 runs a game. Just absurd offensive production. Yeah, EJ had a pair of home runs, and then Cornette, Oberst, and Skull each added one. And when we zoom in on DC3 and Jake Skull, I mean, they were truly the drivers behind this unbelievable offensive output overall. Yeah, these guys had a phenomenal weekend in Gwinnett County. It was a cool moment for Jake Skull, the Roswell native, being back near his hometown. And as you take a look at these guys, they are now number one and number two on their team in OPS Plus this season. Skull with just a little bit of an edge. We touched on each of them going deep over the weekend and each with three home runs. And they nearly matched each other hit for hit. Jake Skull with uh, two doubles, Dalton Cornette with one. But each of these guys, eight runs batted in, leading this party animals batting three and four in the order. And for Jake Skull, three ball, four sprints. Cornette showing even more discipline. Four ball, four sprints, and he had zero coming into that weekend. And that is exactly where they both are in the lineup tonight. Let's get a look at our starting pitching matchup. Noah Nisnik for the Nanners is trying to, gonna try and cool off Skull and Cornette for Dalton Ponce and the Party Animals. He is making his banana ball starting debut. I love this pitching matchup because it's two rookies facing off against each other and it's kind of putting them under the fire of sorts, you know, getting them really accustomed to pitching on this tour. And you've got a very interesting deviation. Noah Nisnik, of course, a lefty, and only three pitches in his arsenal. Meanwhile, the righty Dalton Ponce, five different pitches he can come at the bananas with. And what stands out between these two guys at the end of the day, four ball four sprints combined between these guys. It feels like they are going to be pounding the zone and they're also going to be displaying the dance moves. We've seen so much hip movement from Noah Nisnik when he's pitching. Meanwhile, Dalton Ponce, he's been a part of a healthy amount of 6 2 twos this season for the party animals. Yeah, Sterling numbers for the two of them. Their ERA pluses, Dalton Ponce 166 for Noah Nisnik 145. So they have both been uh, about 50% better than your average banana ball pitcher on this young tour. We talked about it at the top of the show. Uh, Josh and I are just absolutely thrilled because tonight 
we get to call pitches for an entire inning. We're going to do it with Ponce right there in the bottom of the third inning and parlay that into Cowboy Kyle Lewis. Should be coming in in the top of the fourth. We'll have a mic on both of them. Josh and I will call every single pitch they throw in the bottom of the third and the top of the fourth. Having called this many banana ball games, I feel like we've done our scouting reports. Yeah. Obviously, we're going to work with these guys. We're going to give them, hopefully, what they're wanting. And I've got to have it on the record of this broadcast, just in case Cowboy boy Kyle watches it back. Kyle, I am not trying to mess you up in any way. We only want the success for you out there, buddy. Couldn't agree more. We're hoping for back-to-back -back strikeouts of the side, and we will be calling pitches a whole lot more if we can get just that. We're going to have a mic on Dakota Stills Albritton tonight. He is scheduled to get an at-bat later in the game, and we'll be slapping a mic on one of our closers. Whichever team is in the lead when we get to the ninth inning and every run scored counts as a point, we will be talking with them and getting their run through when the game is on the line. So we are absolutely thrilled to be back in the hostess city of the South in beautiful historic race and stadium. It is a phenomenal evening for Banana Ball. Thank you all so much for joining us on YouTube. We're going to get it down to Jesse Cole. He's about to get the fans warmed up, and we would like to see what over 5,000 folks here in Savannah have to say when it comes to the energy. We're about, uh, I'll check my watch here, about eight minutes away from first pitch. Let's get a little bonus action. That, that math was way off. We're about 13 minutes away from first pitch. I mean, I wasn't even close there. Uh, let's get it down to Jesse Cole and see what the folks have here tonight. All right, so whatever you do, Sadie, they're gonna do. You ready? Yes! Bring it, Sadie, here we go! Oh, yes. Good job, Sadie. Oh, yes, a little fist bump, and I like it! Keep it going! Keep it going! Oh, sprinkler! The sprinkler! It's back! That's a good sprinkler, it's still going strong! Oh no, it's more! Keep it going. What? We're doing lunches? What? Lunches, Sadie! Now we're getting a workout. All right. What is this move? Oh no. Oh, she's getting a little crazy, a little fist bumping. And, all right, no, jumping jack! Sadie! Jumping jack! Oh, she's going strong, all right, we got this now. Sadie, look around. 5,000 people ready to go crazy because of you. Let's hear it for six-year-old Sadie! The fans are ready to rumble. Now the young professor is going to get us all ready to rumble. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, and potassium enthusiasts from around the world, tonight you and thousands of your friends here live and thousands watching at home on YouTube have gathered here to witness something beyond your wildest imagination. From Montana to Savannah, from Maine to Fort Wayne, the Banana Maniacs come from across the globe to win this. This, this is not baseball. This is the Crucible, where the fastest, hungriest, and most entertaining players are forged. This is a game of the fans, by the fans, and for the fans. But this is not your granddad's pastime. This is not just another night at the ballpark. This game is baseball by birth, fruit by name, and an absolute worldwide phenomenon by the grace of God. This is the time for all 5,000 people here in Savannah, Georgia, to get on your feet and give me your voices. Because this is the greatest show in the sports. Ladies and gentlemen, for your Savannah Bananas. Leading off in center field, number five, DR, the Doc Meadows. Batting second at third base, number 11, Gabe Howe. 
Batting third at DH, number 19, Dan Ober. Batting clean up the extra hitter, number seven, Michael Vitamin D. Batting fifth at third, first base, number three, Eric Jones. In right field, number 18, Danny Hosley. In left field, number 15, Rack Robert Anthony Cruz. The catcher wearing numero uno, Bill Leroy. At second base, number eight, he is our greatest showman, Jackson Olsen. And our glove magician at shortstop, number six, Ryan Cox. On the mound for your bananas tonight, number 88, Noah Nisnik. Your Savannah Bananas are managed by Tyler Gillum, assisted by Adam Pyro Pirate and Ray Ortega. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise if you're able and remove your hats. Here, to honor America with the singing of tonight's national anthem, please welcome Mandy Matson. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red Gentlemen, Mandy Madsen. It is game 20 of the 2024 Banana Ball World Tour. Loved by the kind of people who will always come back for you, our buddies over at Zappos. The Bananas are 11 and 8. 3-0 so far on the year here in Savannah. And looking to bounce back after dropping two of three this past weekend up north in Gwinnett County. Let's take a look at their defensive alignment as they try to get back in the win column. Jesse Cole and company fired up to be back in Savannah. And as I said, let's take a look at the Bananas defensive alignment. There it is! Robert Anthony Cruz in left, D.R. Meadows in center, Danny Hosley in right. Third to first in the infield, you see Gabe Howell, Ryan Cox, Jackson Olsen, and Eric Jones Jr. Behind the dish is Bill Leroy, Noah Nisnik is on the mound. And pretty cool to see all the guys who are on the diamond for the Bananas in this game have at least one trick play on this season. Saw Bill Leroy behind the plate snag a 
Foul ball barehanded in Gwinnett County. Meanwhile, DR Meadows still pacing the outfielders on this year's World Tour with 13 trick plays. And Rack over there in left field, we saw him get his first career banana ball trick play in the finale in Grayson Stadium in the home opening series. He'd like to try and get his second in front of a sold out Grayson Stadium once again tonight. Let's get a closer look at what has been a great season for Noah Nisnik. Here are the numbers behind it. One for one on his trick plays and nearly notching a strikeout per inning, the ERA under four. That is supremely impressive in Banana Ball. Yeah, Noah Nisnik's been phenomenal overall this season for the Bananas. Last weekend was the first ding on what was previously a spotless record for him. In his last start, three innings pitched, five hits, and the party animals, five earned runs against Noah Nisnik. Drew a sprint, and Noah Nisnik, I think a big reason he wasn't able to succeed as much out there on the mound, zero strikeouts against the party animals. So what needs to change? He needs to work quicker ABs against the party animals. Six of the 15 batters who faced Noah Nisnik last weekend worked him five pitches or more. Tanner Thomas led the charge on 11 pitch plate appearance against Nisnik last weekend. Let's get a quick look at the party animals lineup and then we're tossing it over to Jesse Cole as he fires the folks up. Here he is. Banana Nation, it's time. On three, I need everyone here to yell, start the clock. One, two, three. Showtime. The lineup always starts with Reese Lightning. Reese Hampton for a 20th straight time on the tour, occupying the leadoff spot. Grayson Bloomer making a home for him in the two hole is in the on deck circle. Jake Skull, the only other man due up, he is hitting third. Hampton, the switch hitting center fielder, loves to hack early. Nisnik, a three pitch guy. That was the fastball. You'll also see a circle change up and a curve. Two straight heaters here, two straight foul balls. Now it feels like Nisnik's already set himself up to go off speed to Reese Hampton. Maybe try for a chase pitch. 0-2. Oh, this one over the heart of the plate. DR Meadows got a great jump on this ball, but it will be over his head on the warning track. So Reese Lightning starts off this game for the party animals with a double on the third pitch of the ball game. That is his tour leading ninth two-bagger of the season. Tenth extra base hit overall. He's mixed in one home run. Party Animals home run leader from a year ago. Former Detroit Tigers and Arizona Diamondbacks minor leaguer in scoring position. And now a 1-0 count on Bryson Bloomer. Third baseman in his second world tour. Hot start after bouncing back from off-season surgery. Really tough recovery. Should have taken about half a year. He zoomed it up to nine months after he had surgery to fix right hip labrum impingement. Not fun. He rolls over this one. Cox attacking under the leg, across the diamond, and just in the nick of time. Grayson Wheeler, the first base umpire, makes the call. That Cox has his tour leading 39th trick play and one out away. Bloomer continues to get healthier this season and book it down the line quicker. Nonetheless, you knew with that one being hit to Ryan Cox, he felt very comfortable still going between the legs and firing onto first to get the out while still keeping Reese Hampton at second there. Great play. Party animals and even the bananas alike can't help but dancing when Jake Skull comes up to the dish. Left fielder in his fourth world tour. Seven years of minor league baseball experience after he was a 2010 first round draft pick of the Rangers. And we talked about it on the pregame show, but he's coming off a very special weekend. He's from the Atlanta area. Born and raised in Roswell, calls Woodstock, Georgia home these days. And absolutely pounded the ball in the Braves AAA stadium with the grand finale being a three-run home run off the right field foul pole on Sunday. Yeah, three extra base hits for Skull. Eight runs batted in. He scored six runs himself. And what was funny, he said he almost felt more at ease being back near his hometown of Roswell, playing in Cool Ray Field. Payoff pitch coming to the Tours. 
extra base hit leader overall, 11 of them for school. One more than Hampton who waits on second base. Jake also pacing everybody in run scored and driven in. And that one right at the knees, called strike three. Niz freezes him and that's a big second out. Niz nasty, stanky legging on the mound. That leg be stanking from Noah Nisnik. <laughs> Jake Skull tried to sell what was hopefully a ball four sprint there, but Vincent Chapman with a good call ringing him up there. Big second out, but Noah Nisnik not out of the woods either. Dalton Cornett also coming off an incredible series last weekend. The pride of Pippa Passes, Kentucky. Take strike one. That was a perfectly located fastball right on the black of the outside corner. You get a quick look at his numbers on the tour right there as he is jammed. Only people who could catch this one would be the fans, and it ends up on top of the grandstands. Cornette in his third world tour, pacing the party animals with the 352 batting average you just saw. His three home runs tied for the team lead. Just like Skoll, he drove in eight runs this past weekend across the three games up in Gwinnett County and had a five RBI game in game one. Second time he accomplished that in his banana ball career. And of course, that's the single game record in a banana ball game. Now Cornette hits this one hot to third base. Oh! Jackson Olsen behind the back and under the legs. Flips this one over to EJ at first base and Noah Nisnik escapes trouble with excellent defense behind him. Yeah, hot one there to Olsen. And we got a little extra spice on what has become his patented trick play in his first season at second base after he held down the hot corner last year. Another look, that was a beauty. His 21st trick play in 23 attempts. And the Nanners will just need one run to win the inning. Let's look at the Party Animals defense trying to prevent that from happening. Left to right in the outfield. Skull, Hampton, and Tanner Thomas, third to first in the infield. You see Bloomer, Chase Acuff, Dustin Baber, and Jason Swan. Catching for the Animals is Bronson Ballholm and Dalton Ponce there on the bump. For the first time on this 2024 tour, it's Chase Acuff who finds himself in sole possession of the team lead in trick plays with 28. Dustin Baber, he's going to try and get that record back after tonight's Drake, game. can you hear me in this Reese mic? Hampton last weekend, two trick plays of his own in center field. He is pacing party animals outfielders with eight. And Tanner Thomas collected his second in the finale in Gwinnett County, going under the legs and making a phenomenal snag. Let's get a look. At the man out of Fontana, California, Dalton Ponce. And just over seven innings of work on this tour has been very impressive. A lot of hits, but he has been stranding guys all over the place. And has not gotten a lot of help from his defense. It's the first career banana ball start for Dalton Ponce. And the last time out, an inning pitch, bananas went three at three down. And Dalton Ponce had two strikeouts as well. He's shown great command. Only one ball four sprint. And two innings he's thrown this year have been below three minutes as well. So a lot of encouraging signs. All he's got to focus on, location out there, making sure he doesn't leave too many pitches over the heart of the plate that get tagged by the Bananas. Quick peek at the Nanners starting lineup. D.R. Meadows at the top for the 19th time across the 20 games. Gabe Howell behind him, then Dan Oberst. Michael Deeb cleaning it up. Eric Jones Jr., Danny Hosley, Robert Anthony Cruz in the middle, and the bottom three, Bill Leroy, Jackson Olsen, and Ryan Cox. An ambush there from Meadows. He broke his bat. It sounded like at least, I hope not. That's what I use before every game to launch foam balls out to the fans in the party plaza. I feel scared for you. I'm I want worried. you to know that I feel the secondhand fear. We did not like the sound of that. Ponce got in on the hands. Dalton has a five pitch mix. And then fires a fastball low there. He loves to use the heater. He was in the MLB Draft League this past summer. And had an unbelievable finale to his time with the Frederick Keys. Complete game through 116 pitches. 90 of them were fastballs, and it was a shutout. And I think. When you looked at the numbers coming into this banana ball season, Dalton Ponce kind of projected as a possible swing guy for these party animals. A guy you can throw for multiple innings in the bullpen, but if you want to give him a start, he is more than capable of going out there and going long. He's just hoping it's not long bombs away. 
Nice bender there. I mentioned it's a five pitch mix. That was the curveball. Four seam and two seam fastball. So drop down, drop down to sidearm with the two seam and then a change up slider. That was actually the slider you saw. It's a 12 6 curve. So you'll see more vertical movement than horizontal as this one's grabbed with the bare hand. Dustin Baber ties Chase Acuff for second place on the tours and trick plays with 28. And all of a sudden, all tied up between Baber and Acuff in the perfect way to get the trick play light off the bat of Gabe Howell there. No fear from Dustin Baber coming down with the bare hand snag. And Dalton Pont had Howell all out in front of that ball going off speed. A lot of English on that one. Same goes for that base knock from Dan Oberst. The DH in his third year as a pro, sixth year as a banana, going back to his first three years here in Savannah when he was a collegiate nanner, 2019 for 2021. Hitting 333, a 382 on base percentage. Both those numbers go up. And will run just like that. And he's going to steal this one on Ponce. I mean, Bronson Ballholm never had a chance in the world. Oberst got a monster jump in his six for six in his stolen base attempts. This is only the fourth start behind the plate for Bronson Ballholm on this season. So not expecting the Bananas to be running with two outs, but that's kind of been one of the main agendas of Tyler Dillon's green light special base running system since it's been incorporated into Banana Ball, trying to get the walk off here if Deep can single or draw a ball for sprint. Seven walk offs on the tour for Michael Vitamin Deeb in his fourth campaign as a Banana Baller. Peter fouled away. See what Ponce goes with here on one and two. Deep led the 2022 tour with five walk-offs across that 12 game season. Spoils this one out towards the kid zone. Look out <laughs> to the afloatables. And that'll be a souvenir. Nobody injured. Another one, two, tries to backdoor the bender. This is down and deuces are wild. Inning winning run in scoring position. After a look towards Oberst, Ponce floats the breaking ball high and now ball four will win the inning for the Bananas. And I think if you're Dalton Ponce, be comfortable in your stuff here and confident. Go heater, get it over the plate, and force Michael Deeb to find grass here to get the walk off. Oh, baby, just misses up and out. With the fastball, Deeb will grab walk off number eight. He's one behind Oberst for the tour lead. Dan touches home, and the Nanners lead one point to nothing and ending it. A big first point for the Bananas in this ball game. And how about this? Seven walk-offs for Michael Deeb in his last eight games. Eight straight games with a run batted in. Let's get it down to Party Animals correspondent Drake Toll with a riveting report. Hey, Biko, Josh, good to be back with you guys. Let me tell you a bit about Coach Mike Vava Bavasis, the head skip of the Party Animals, who does things a little bit different. Instead of filling out his lineup, says the guys are about to go bat on a normal lineup card, he puts them on random objects that he finds throughout the clubhouse, whether that's cans, soy sauces, even apples, and that happens actually every single stop of the tour. Well, today he felt like, I'm not sure if I can stay as creative. What do we got lying around that might be new? And it was this hat that has an R on it that stands for Rack. Rack gave everyone a free hat. Very generous thing to do, and Vava said, well, I guess I only have one option, and that's to write today's lineup on it. So the party animals in the top of the second will bat, uh, let's see here, five hole hitter Chase Acuff, then the six hole Tanner Thomas, and then in the seven spot, Noah Fisher. I know that because I'm reading it off the lineup here. I'm not sure if the guys know it because their lineup card is in my hands on a coach rack hat. That's the way they do things a little bit different here in Party City. It's the greatest party in sports and Mike Vava Vavasis is a good reason why. Guys, party on. Drake Toll, thank you very much. The creativeness on the items used for the lineup does not cease. I think my favorite of all time is probably the McChicken wrapper. <laughs> the apple was very impressive to me. But nonetheless, you know what also stands out? Mike Vavasis' penmanship. 
Yeah, good guy could be a scribe. As Drake said, Acuff, Thomas, and Fisher, five, six, seven here. Chase having a phenomenal second banana ball tour. His first time in Banana Land, he was a 2021 collegiate nanner, part of that squad that won the first of two back-to-back -back Pettit Cups. Acuff hitting 328, a 382 on base percentage, and he gets a heater behind his tuchus. That one looked like it might have scared Acuff just a tad there, saw a little bit of a jump, and we saw Chase Acuff promoted to the five spot last weekend in Gwinnett County. Party animals were rewarded as Acuff had four hits and three runs batted in for them. Chops one towards Howell, who scoops it up and makes a smooth play across the diamond in plenty of time. One away here in the second. We saw web gem after web gem last weekend for Gabe Howell in Gwinnett County, and it continues as we return to Savannah, Georgia, picking that one with a great hop and an excellent throw on the first to Eric Jones Jr. going to the other side of the bag as well, making sure not to collide there with Aka. Back-to-back Florida men here for the animals from the St. Pete kid. We go now to the Fleming Island, Florida native, Josh Tolevsky. You can't believe your eyes. Jackson Olsen, nice scoop, knocks it down. Fine play by the grade eight for out number two. Four pitches and two quick outs for Noah Nisnik in this inning. Great job by Jackson Olsen, just getting in front of the ball, staying with it, getting up, and making a good throw on the first. And be good to answer your question. Yes, I thought it was a first pitch strike. Tanner <laughs> Thomas, I'll tell you what. This nasty Leroy and their manners compadres won't complain, they got the out. There's a big bender that gets the knees. Noah Fisher, the designated hitter in his first season of banana ball, sends this one deep to right. Hosley backpedaling. Will trick play it, his second of the season. Like a hibachi chef traps that thing on the glove and that is a quick inning for Niz. Great banana ball field from Danny Hosley, his second trick play of the tour and Noah Nisnik with a sub two minute inning out there for the Bananas. One minute and 39 seconds for the left-hander. Great couple of frames of work for Niz Nasty. Bananas lead one point to nothing, just need one run to double that lead. Robert Anthony Cruz due to swing it third here in the second inning and he had himself a huge weekend in Gwinnett. That was a walk off RBI single to tie game two and then wow, Dance Dance Revolutioning, another base knock. Unbelievable stuff, this one. A bouncer fair down the first baseline, two baggers still rocking the DDR on second. And then how about this blast? First home run of what we are sure will be a prolific banana ball career, and it was a walk off. The world has finally been put on notice. The breakout has come for Rack and the Bananas over his last two series. He's batting 583 with two doubles, a home run, four runs batted in, and three walk-offs. He is just absurd right now. Before Cruz is due to swing it here in the bottom of the second, Danny Hosley and leading it off, Eric Jones Jr. The sing-off finishing up. Dalton Ponce trying to hold serve here. Got two quick outs in the first. And then Dan Oberst, green light specialed him. Line drive, single, steal of second base. And Michael Deeb worked a great 3-2 count. And worked a walk-off sprint. So 5-6-7 now for the Nanners. EJ leading it off, the first baseman in his third world tour. Last year's home run leader with the dozen. He's taking a creative route to home plate here. How about Jared Donaldson? <laughs> Pedaling him EJ. And this is the shot, no doubt about it. Are you kidding me? Taking a journey Feels like a thousand miles long up to the dish. Yeah. 
ever a showman. The former Mariners and Twins minor leaguer, 2022 Mariners bullpen catcher. Boy, oh boy, has he bought in and absolutely thrived across his three banana ball world tours. Just like he did last year, currently leading this season in home runs. Four of them, two, lasted out across the three games this past weekend. And something we touched on last week, and for Eric Jones Jr., four, eight career home runs, excuse me, eight career home runs in February and March for him across his entire banana ball career. He always has a hot start for these guys. Ponce challenges him with the fastball, works his way back into the count. DJ's 15 runs driven in, pacing all bananas. It's it Chapman moving it and grooving it. Constantly behind the dish, good barrel there by EJ, but Hampton able to track it down. Well, we've always seen that Reese Hampton is an excellent defender for the party animals in here after running all the way out to deep center field. He goes over the shoulder to come up with that catch, robbing EJ of extra bases. Danny Hosley gets the royal treatment. After a keyboard is used to get EJ up to the plate, the entire banana band blasting away on their brass. Get Danny do it all up there. Nice fastball. Golly, where did that miss? Excellent pitch from Ponce, does not get the call. He is not perturbed. Goes right back to the well, and Hosley just a bit early on that one. And we saw Dalton Ponce with a little bit of a stutter before delivering that pitch to Danny Hosley. And even though Hosley had great wood on that ball, I think the stutter step, the reason Hosley so out in front of that one from Ponce. Front door bender. Nearly clips Donaldson, signing autographs down the third baseline. Ponce has jumped ahead. Another heater, another foul ball. That one came in at 90 miles an hour, according to Trackman, and possibly well out in front. Another front door bender, another foul ball yanked to the left side. Yeah, we're seeing a recurring theme right now with these Danny Hosley, or these pitches coming into Danny Hosley. Hopefully he will be able to make the adjustment here, get this one into fair play, and hopefully landing in for a base knock as he'll take this one low from, or from Ponce. Good blinks there. Ponce jamming out on the mound. Couple shakes and the 2-2. Two -two. That ball smoked. It is big time trouble. One hop off the Savannah A's sign. The second of the 11 baseball teams ever to call historic Grayson Stadium home. And the inning winning run in scoring position with one away. Great knock for Danny Hosley. Extra base hits have kind of been far and few between for him as he's been playing off and on platooning with Reese Alexiades, but finally able to sit back and drive that ball out to deep left field. And just a reminder, in 2023, arguably the Bananas' best bat here in Grayson Stadium. Led the Torin walk-offs, another fastball borderline. Hans doesn't get the call. And a healthy hack from Cruz. 333, a 392 on base percentage. And muscles this one deep to center. Hampton's got a beat on it. Right in front of the track, calls it in. Hosley will tag up and take third. And the inning winning run 90 feet away with two down now. Yeah, productive out nonetheless from Rack driving this one out to deep center and allowing Hosley the tag. And for Rack, he told us that after game one in Baton Rouge, he had really started to figure something out at the plate. He was not joking with how hot he's been. And across these last seven games for him, he hasn't struck out a single time. Here comes the man in his seventh world tour. Check that, seventh year as a banana. Third world tour. 
One of the co-captains of the Nanners, Bill Leroy. Fastball misses up. Another one looked great here. Tight zone from Vincent Chapman. Another great pitch, doesn't get the call. Right around the edge of the zone. Chapman's gonna force Ponce to throw this thing right down the chute. That clearly missed. And he's one bad one away from losing this inning. Yeah, we'll see Bill Arroy, a very patient hitter, if he's hacking on 3-0 here and gets the green light. Oh, boy. Another one towards the top of the zone. Ponce once again doesn't get the call. Three tough ones in that plate appearance. Leroy will take the walk-off sprint. All Ponce can do is smile and head back to the dugout. And what do we have here? Ryan Kellogg is going to see if we can get this thing into one of the corners. If he does, this place might explode. There it is. Oh, yes. This feels so good. It just feels so good. Inject that into my veins every night, Pico. <laughs> Manners up, two points to Zilch, two innings in. We'll throw it down to Maceo and the fellas as they dance us to the third. job from Maceo Harrison, Malachi Mitchell, DJ the Invader, Christian Deerman, and Alex Ziegler. Nanners up two points to nothing. Two innings in, Noah Nisnik back out on the bump for his third frame of work. He has the bottom three in the party animals order. Ball home, Baber, and Swan, and Bronson leading it off the catcher, switch hitter. In a small sample size, having a fantastic start to his banana ball career. We had five hits in the last series in Gwinnett County last week, and he's got eight runs batted in overall. They've all come via the ball for sprint, and we'll see what kind of matchup we get as it's going to be Balhome batting from the right side, and he hit very well from that side last weekend. And he is going to take a creative journey to home plate, Lealios showering him with money. Turns out, this is education connection. Josh, I'd never heard this in my entire life before today. You got this is a staple of daytime television. You're sick from school, you stay home, you're watching like Jerry Springer, Judge Judy, maybe some cartoons. The education connection song is gonna come on. I didn't I didn't have cable growing up, Josh. This is literally the first time I've ever heard this song in my entire life. Bronson Balhom might just be the perfect guy, by the way, to walk up to this song. Good point. Considering this is a guy who is a genius, studied astrophysics, reads about space exploration in his free time. And again, we've had some graphics that have said he's the most likely man to invent a time machine. Started at Beloit College, finished up at his dream school, Arizona State University. One of the three Sun Devils we have in Banana Land. Connor Higgins, his teammate, also Arizona State, and Ryan Kellogg of the Nanners, a Sun Devil as well. That was a good poke from Ballholm. 
one of the problems of playing a sport in a ballpark now in its 99th year of existence is we've got steel beams that will completely annihilate our high home shot. Luckily, we throw a low home camera so that you can actually see what happens. Yeah, and a great running snag by Danny Hosley, kind of going over the shoulder as well there. And still a good piece by Bronson Balho. Very encouraging, nonetheless, even though it's an out. Just so good to see him tag a ball to the opposite field like that. This is vintage Niznik here early on tonight. He's one of the best pitchers on the tour across his first 10 innings of work. And He's got everything working this evening. Beautiful bender there to jump ahead of Baber, and now he's brought in Olsen, Cox, and Meadows for a choreographed dance. A little classic Niz Nasty patented Riz, and blows a heater past Baber. And tipped the ball up to himself, caught it, and then fired a perfect swinging strike as Baber able to spoil that curveball with Noah Nisnik with the shoulder shake. I think he wanted that for strike three. What makes him so tough, too, is the two curveballs he's thrown in this at-bat. Trackman has had it 69 and 72 miles an hour, and then he throws a fastball right there at 89. He's about 88 to 90 normally with it. Fine play by Ryan Cox. Enjoy avoiding his partner up the middle and taking care of Faber. No, that one could not be handled by Eric Jones Jr. trying to pick at first base. Oh. It's Dustin Baber actually able to reach on the throwing error from Ryan Cox. Throwing error or an infield single? Well, I think throwing error most likely. Well, that was a tough play up the middle. I'm putting in E6 for now. I'd like to take another look. The review committee will meet after the game tonight. Had to avoid Jackson Olsen. Off balance. Tricky play. And I consider Eric Jones, Eric Jones Jr. Mr. Reliable over at first base. It was just a foregone conclusion that he picked that ball for me. 2-1 count here now on Jason Swan. A donut hitter tonight. He strikes out. The 5,000 fans that make up the 306th straight sold out Bananas or Party Animals crowd will be blessed with three donuts courtesy of Duncan. Good jump there by Baber. Throw from Leroy, not in time. Chris Walker, the umpire there to make the call. And a wild pitch from Miz as Baber in scoring position. Yeah, good try by Bill Leroy throwing down and trying to get Dustin Baber, but Jason Swan in a pretty advantageous count now has the opportunity to bring in Dustin Baber for a party animals run. Instead, skies this out to deep right field. Danny Hosley, another catch out there up against the wall. Huge second out for Noah Nisnik and a great play by Hosley. And he just leapt up and high-fived the fans after the catch. He did that after he made a nice run and catch in just about the same spot to begin the frame. This time even tighter up against that wall. And that was 16 feet going into the tour. Cut it down to eight so that the folks out there could see in the new seats. And Baber, who reached on the error, got up to second on the wild pitch to third on the sack fly, will come in on another wild pitch. Party Animals' first run of the ball game. Yeah, unfortunate for Noah Nismick out there on the mound, just not being able to have Bill Leroy get in front of those balls and just going with some breaking balls that end up being a little short of reaching the glove of Bill. It'll be a 1-0 count on Reese Hampton. Baber all smiles after giving the Animals their first chance to win an inning. A line drive base knock from Hampton. That makes you feel a little bit better. I don't know if the pitch selection would have been different as Hampton takes a big round but heads back to first. But that single would have driven in Baber either way. And Reese Hampton, another guy getting red hot for the party animals, was 0 for 15 entering the game in Houston, Texas in the Bananas Big League Park debut as Noah Nisnik will pick off Reese Hampton to get out of the top of the third. 
Second time we've seen Nismic pick off a batter, and the lefty, he's got a deadly move. He limits the damage to just the one run. You get another look. Use is the step off of the mound with the left foot. Just another weapon in Niz Nasty's arsenal. And out for his third inning of work, Dalton Ponce with a mic on him. Ponce, how you living? Are you can you hear me, boys? Oh, we got oh. you loud and clear. Guys, we're having fun today, huh? Oh, we are having a blast. Now, I think you've looked tremendous out there. Tight yeah. strike zone. Oh, man, okay. I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> we can leave it at that. But uh, at that. I'm going to be honest. It's been it's tough been one. Very, uh, <laughs> the selection. You have been tough. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah. you have not gotten a lot of help behind the plate, but yeah. that's why Josh and I are here yes. to call every pitch for you this inning. Your boys, I'm so fired up right now. <laughs> I think yeah. we might be yeah. more fired up, though. <laughs> Guys, I am so happy. Send a bound, boy. Okay, so this is this is what we like to see too. Bottom two in the order, and then Dr. Meadows do up third. Before that, okay. it'll be Jackson Olson and Ryan Cox. Your first two. And there's just no no time to waste as he has a have a kiss off finishing up yeah. the first base. Look at me and Olsen right now though. Yeah, there it is. I think All right. I think okay, we need a fastball on the outer half for okay. strike one to Jackson Olsen. I like it. I love it. Nothing too crazy for yeah, me. Nothing too crazy. Let's do this thing. Alright. Here we go. Just kidding! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my yeah, gosh, yeah. he almost fouled it right to us. I heard that first pitch strike gets credited to Josh and Biko. <laughs> All right, what do we got next, boys? I feel like change up, tunnel it, just like that last I, one. No, I don't think so. You don't like that yeah. fastball? Just go fastball. right back to the well. Yeah, here we go. Uh. Is he allowed to shake us off? Yeah. I'm so confused. I, I thought I, I, we I, were calling the pitch. I don't think I have a changeup in the arsenal, boys. All right, Matt, what do we let's got? Let's go one more fastball. Okay, here we go. Ah. I mean, I, I think it's just heater o'clock here. Let's get to two strikes. Yep, 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 yep. Like it. Oh, no. boy. That's okay. Wait, wait, wait. Sit down, please. Hampton's yeah. got plenty of room. Yeah, and he makes the catch. Boys. <laughs> <laughs> My heart was racing, but we needed that. Where's Olsen? Yeah, close one. No oh. fly zone, Dalton. Yeah, I love it. Love playing at Savannah. There's the first one. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't nervous for a heartbeat. <laughs> okay, Ryan Cox, I think like you did in your Boys. final outing for the Frederick Keys, let's just keep throwing fast. Wow, I love it. Here we go. Yep. Oh my god. I mean, why not do another? Maybe uh, maybe drop down two seamer? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep, good Ryan, call there. We, we've got to go call. off speed here. I feel like we've got to okay. go off speed. Okay. What do you want? Bender, maybe a little yep. back foot slider. Yep. Here we go, boys. Oh no, you did it! <laughs> Look at us go! Oh here we go, boys. Oh, no, you did it. <laughs> Look at us go. Oh, Swatty. Oh, 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 oh baby. Oh. Tried to get tricky with it. You got the out. But that's yeah, yeah, okay. that... It's just double play o'clock now. Yeah. We're good. We're good. Only fourth missed trick play of the tour for Jason Swan. I like the attempt there. Yeah. We're good. Here we go. What we okay, got? so it's just the guy who's been the best hitter on the tour. Yeah, now. fine now. Here we go. Uh, heater early. Let's yeah. go fastball. Yep. Easy money. Easy money. Okay, Maybe a little front door, a curveball now. Okay. There goes Cox. You got Come the strike. On. Yay! Yeah. How about the cannon ball oh. home's got? Unbelievable oh work behind the plate from Bronson Ballholm. Ballholm, you see the celebration there, gumming yes. him down as he was yes, crawling boys. in the dirt. Yes. 
Love that. We love our defense. Threw out Malachi All last right. week and now throws out Coxie. O2. The hottest guy in Banana Land. What do we got, boys? Uh, Curveball. Yeah, okay. curveball below go. the knees. Yes! <laughs> oh, he fouled it? Oh. Oh, I oh it. Ponzi. Oh, I wanted it. That was the greatest moment in my broadcasting oh. career. Boys, that was awesome. Ball home liked the call, too. Oh, I did, too. Do we well, go back to the well or maybe a little high fastball? Yeah, I like the fastball. High ched. I like high it. ched. Yep. Okay, here we go. Yep, Good yep. work. Ah, get your swan, get Come your swan. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> Boys. Boys, we did it. Dalton Ponce, Woo. thank you so much for you making our dreams are come true. You hey, guys are amazing. Let's thank do it again sometime. I want to do it again sometime. Let's do it, boys. Peace out. Love Great you work tonight, Superstar. I love yeah. you, man. You might take my job. Look at all. Another look at Swanee Racing DR to the bag. We've got the Banana Nanas, and then a little later on tonight, we'll do the same thing with Cowboy Kyle Lewis. The Banana Nana is stupendous, as per usual. And this was the time we were going to have Cowboy Kyle Lewig doing the exact same event. But no Nisnik's just so gosh darn good. He's going to get an extra frame. So that pushes Josh and I's sophomore campaign of calling pitches to the top of the fifth inning. We did not mention it. Josh, you and I just earned a point. I mean, Dalton Ponce just earned a point. We earned a point. With I, Dalton Ponce's assistance. Correct. But we did the lion's share of the work. It was three up, three down. And Josh <laughs> and Biko threw a three minute and 26 second inning. I mean, I mean Dalton Ponce. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Ponce threw the pitches orchestrated by your banana ball broadcaster. Now Vincent Chapman breaking it down behind the dish. Technically in front of it. Big hug with Niz Nasty. I'm still riding the high of. I mean, the MPI there was immaculate too. I'm walking to go see the book. <laughs> you're gonna, I'm just gonna put, do it. You're gonna put us in the stats because you can. Pays to be both the color commentator who gets to call the pitches and the Banalytics statistical savant. Hot shot. Deflected off the glove of Howell. That'll be a base hit for the Animals third baseman, Bryson Bloomer. One for two on the night. It's a Bloomer barrel and a great jump by Gabe Howell trying to get that ball at third base, but took a little bit of a high jump and just ricocheted off of that glove and into the outfield. Great knock from Bloomer. Still looking for that first extra base hit on the season as well. We'll be happy with that single for now. Jake Skull struck out looking. Only punch out of the ball game thus far for Niz. Nice heater there, right on the corner for strike one. It is a two to one bananas lead in points. Three innings into this game. We'll have the scoreboard back up for you post haste. Currently battling the gremlins of our ballpark here. It's always great to be in a stadium built in 1926. 
This is a haunted town after all. The, Do you realize? The most haunted city in the country. Hey, Jesse Cole grabbed the foul ball. There's spooks and spirits. <laughs> could be Babe Ruth, could be Lou Gehrig, Hank Aaron. They all played here in Grayson Stadium. Whoever it is, we're not happy with them. They must not be happy with us. Good battle here between Nisnik and Skoll. Another look, Jesse Cole. Guy still got the hands all the way back to the Wofford days. Skoll getting a smell of his lumber. There goes Bloomer for second. It's a sprint. Bill tried to hold the ball. He throws it away, though. Bloomer will score easily. How many bases is Skoll going to get? All seven fielders behind the catcher and pitcher have to touch the ball before it's live. It'll be a three-base sprint for the Animals left fielder as he drives in Bloomer for the second straight inning. The party animals draw blood. Just a big mistake from Bill Leroy here. Now the party <laughs> animals come <laughs> for the water bottle flip, then the table flip, and they can't land either of these correctly. And Oh, the guys, the guys are not happy with Bryce and Bloomer right now. Oh, for two for the Boomer. <laughs> I, want, I would like to see that more often on this tour. You see Bill Leroy having to head towards the animals dugout and retrieve that one. He thought about throwing it, then tried to pump fake it, and the worst possible combination of the two is what occurred. No outs here in the inning as our scoreboard comes and goes. And that one in on the hands of Cornette, straight to Hosley. Skull will tag from third. He's got excellent speed. Hosley has a cannon, and he didn't have a chance. Sack fly for Cornette. His 19th run driven in, one behind Skull, who just grabbed number 20. And now Jake gets to attempt the impossible. Here comes the flip. He doesn't nail it. Here comes the table. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> oh man, I don't, I don't want more runs for the party animals this inning for Noah Nisnik's sake. But boy, oh boy, do I yearn to see those guys just nail one of the two. I'm not asking for both. I don't know if Bloomer can bear another. Third time's a charm, Josh. That ball destroyed out to left. One hop off the Savannah Pirates sign. The fourth of the 11 inhabitants of this ballpark. Booming double for Acuff as he continues to absolutely rake on this tour. Yes, seven doubles now on the tour for Chase Acuff. And you could hear all the way up here in the booth the reaction from the party animals dugout thinking that one was going to leave the yard, but Still, Acuff not going to be upset about the two-bagger. Not at all. One of his two home runs on the season did come here in Grayson Stadium. A little more launch angle, though, than that screamer. Now Tanner Thomas bounced out to Olsen at second his first time. Can't catch up to the cheese. Behind 0-2. Little nubber, and it's going to be over the head of Howell Fair. Hustling home, Acuff, the throw from Cox. In time. What a play by the glove magician to keep the damage at two runs for now here in the top of the fourth. Does not look like the party animals are going to offer a challenge on that play. Makes sense considering they're up two runs in this inning already. But Chase Acuff was full, head down, rounding third and coming to score. I don't think he was quite aware that Ryan Cox close to that banana ball to get it into Bill Leroy. And man, on second look here, questionable whether Bill got the glove on Acuff. From up here, by the way, it is the top of the fourth inning. We just continue to battle the Grumlins. Nothing about the score is correct right now. We're just doing our best. Completely ignore that scoreboard. The Bananas lead the game two points to one. The Party Animals lead the inning two runs to nothing. And this one chopped. Nice grab by Nisnik between the legs. He grabs his second trick play in as many tries on the year. But the Party Animals 
used three hits to push home two runs. Strand a man. And if they could keep the Bananas to one run or less in the bottom of the fourth, we'll tie this game at two points apiece. o'clock here in Savannah as we continue to battle the gremlins whose main goal in life is to cause technical difficulties to BTV. There is nothing they would rather achieve than see us floundering here in our fourth broadcast in historic Grayson Stadium on the season. Two hundred and twenty-fifth great sold out game here in Grayson. The great folks from 2016 through 2019 had 88 straight before I arrived in 2020. I've had the pleasure of calling 137 straight sold out games here in a row. Iron voice of BTV, Biko Scout. 218 straight games when you include those outside of Historic Racing Stadium. Just nothing I would rather do. <laughs> what would I be doing if I wasn't broadcasting Banana Ball, Joe? Come on. You? Me? What would you be doing? You'd be on some kind of Lord of the Rings quest. I'd be in New Zealand gallivanting around in a suit of armor. Good point. Meadow. Checking out the Shire. Not a bad alternate path for me. Zach Blankenship comes in to replace Dalton Ponce, who pitches through three innings. Only will be credited for two and a third because of the walk-offs in the first and the second. They had two outs each time. Blankenship comes in for two, three, and four. Howell, Oberst, and Deeb. And he's trying to protect a two-run advantage that his offense gifted him. Nice play by Aka. He retakes the trick play lead for the Animals with his 29th on the season. Chase Aka making that one look easy, going between the legs with a great throw over to first base in Jason Swan. And for Zach Blankenship taking the hill, he's coming off of the best outing in his banana ball career, getting three outs in one minute and 33 seconds, his first ever sub two minute inning in banana ball, and he earned a point in that span as well. Dan Oberst a mile high. Jake Skull takes control of the Bermuda Triangle situation that was developing over there. Oberst had singled, so in second, and then scored the inning winning run in the first one. This guy, Michael Vitamin Deeb, who you will see at the dish after this replay. Worked a full count, and then earned ball four. This one, a heater from Blankenship, fired high. Deeb and Blankenship very close. Great friends off the field. I've been blessed to get to spend a lot of time with the duo together. Walk away with your cheeks hurting from far too much laughing. And they have very interesting on the field history between each other as well. Zach Blankenship has gotten Michael Deeb to foul out to fans twice. Healthy hack on 3-1. That's the two seam sinker. That is Blankenship's primary weapon. They're working a curveball changeup and splitter as well. Deep boogieing in the box, as he's been known to do. Here comes the payoff pitch with two down. Bounce back up the middle. Akoff can't get there. Deep on base for the second time tonight. He keeps the inning alive. Now Eric Jones Jr. with his four home runs to pace the tour. Represents the inning tying run at the dish. Yeah, right guy you want up at the plate if you're the Bananas. And 
They're going to opt not to pinch run to Michael Deeb either, leave him out to run, and just hope that EJ is able to go long bombs away. <laughs> it completely makes sense because Deeb isn't the important run, EJ is. So let the kid run the bags, his fellow four-year banana, also a part of all four world tours. Malachi Flash the Kid Mitchell so often is taking his spot. Ebers gets to have some fun time, free time on the bags. Another barrel from EJ, and once again, nothing to show for it. Leaping grab from Hampton. He has crushed the ball to Reese twice tonight and is 0 for 2. Nice inning from Blankenship, who continues to look great on the mound as he handstands his way off of it. We'll get it down to Jolie Shabala to honor our Bananas Foster family of the night. children and teens in foster care without a permanent home. To raise awareness and bring families together, we created a nonprofit called Bananas Foster. This organization is dedicated to celebrating those in the foster care community while educating and inspiring others to get involved. Tonight, we are celebrating the Roddenberry family. This family has been licensed for nine years. Though the many children have come into their home, many have been reunified with biological children. And in total, they have welcomed 55 children and teens into their home. Fans, please help us celebrate the Roddenberry family for making a difference right here in our community. Just about a special moment as you can ever find in Banana Land, which is seriously saying something. Really cool in there. You can see a lot of words being shared. The big group hug for our superheroes from the foster community. Yeah, just a really special moment and always fun to see it here in Grayson Stadium as well. Just wonderful ovations every time from the fans in this ballpark. And taking over on the bump as we head to the top of the fifth inning, one of our best friends in the entire universe with the mic on him, Cowboy Kyle Lewis. Boys, boys, boys. How are we living up there? Oh, my gosh. Never better. Now, we have a lot to live up to after Ponce's three batters, three outs in the bottom of the third. I'm furiously... Trying to call your catcher here, Kyle. Call he didn't Mill? pick up. Yeah, he. So let's uh, let's just leave him in the dark. Okay, so you're just gonna. You know, he's he's caught <laughs> Kyle for seven years now. You would think he'd be able to handle it. And I just want to, yeah, for, forewarn you guys. Sorry, I couldn't join you in the uh, fourth. Uh, Niznik was shoving, uh, but we'll make it work in the fifth. And. Um, once you guys to call my pitches, everything feels great, so. That's that's what I was just about to ask, Kyle. We did not get the chance to ask Dalton Ponce this before he took the mound, but I was going to ask you what felt good in the bullpen. I mean, just about everything. That changeup's still a work in progress. It was a little firm, uh, but sometimes it's effectively firm. So uh, as long as you guys can roll with the pace of play, I'll uh, I'll throw just about anything you guys got, unless oh, I hate whoa. it. Roll with the pace of play. Okay, it's bottom three in the order. Bronson, ball home, fastball, fastball. <laughs> Banger. What you want? Why broke what ain't fixed? Blow it by him again, Kyle. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, we're going in here. Yep. Yes! I like your thinking, Biko. Good, Mr. Louie. All right, two strikes. You got something to play with here. Cowboy up and throw him a changeup. Oh, 
Oh my god, you're crazy. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh-uh. Bill wants fastball up. Yeah, there he is. Oh! That was That nasty. was disgusting! Oh. That was the best change I've ever thrown in my life. Okay, we can go fastball up now to satisfy. You think so? Program. I like fastball. Hi, Chad. I like it. Okay, Bill wants it too. Yep. Oh, you showed him it. All right, back foot slider. Okay, I like that. No. No. Yeah. yeah. That was terrible pitch. That was not back foot at all. Catch it. Oh, look out, folks. <laughs> Golly. That was so catchable. Uh, okay. I feel like I think we go back to the cheese, maybe outside corner, maybe jam him in again. I like the cheese. Let's see what Bill's got. Yeah, he wants cheese in. I like cheese in. Well, I don't you guys can shake us off. There it is. <laughs> is Look at these heads peek out. Oh, come on now, Kyle. We're shaking them up here too, buddy. All right, so for my stat line, um, you guys can take a strike out away from me and put it under y'all's book. That warms the heart. That warms the heart right there. Right. Um, you look phenomenal tonight. Thank I, you. I really like the heaters in. I think we start Baber with a fastball in. All right. This is a guy that we can't let get a hit. No. That was cheese. I want I want slider now here, Kyle. Okay. Good call, Josh. Oh, oh great oh, pitch. Good pitch. They hey, wanted to. Hey, let's go back to the gas. Okay. Yep. Got a guy. Can of corn. Oh my god, Hosley. Scared me for a second. <laughs> Good swing, Baber. He's just, he's just taking his time. Okay. He did not seem very happy. He did not want to talk to me at all. We're two for two. Jason Swan now. And I'm just loving starting these guys with fastball, fastball in. Yeah. Fastball in. Come on. I'm going to actually choose a location. Yes. Right. You want fastball in? Oh, in. there's a donut guy. Still, we haven't got him yet. But a strike. Not too far. Yeah, I got you. One, two, three. Oh my gosh, that we could strike up the donut course. batter here. Just a pinch low, it could, Josh, you, we, we could do it. Another heater. Uh, we're going slider, Bill wants a slider. Oh is that all right? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, that's fine, yeah, that's fine. Fine, slider. We'll do, that's okay. <laughs> oh, that was a great pitch. We gotta get back in the count, man. It was a great pitch. Okay, all right. on you guys, for real. Fastball, in. Yeah. Same page with Bill, too. Yo, oh, that was great execution. Oh, and that went straight to Bill's two that he's got on his person. <laughs> I think high fastball now. I, I was going to say change up. I wanted, I wanted to snap up another change Josh, up. Josh, you're crazy. You can you can overrule me here. I want the change up. Josh wants the change. I've got a game to play. Can you guys figure out what we're doing? Yeah, change up. Okay, this is going to take a lot of shakes to get Bill there. Nope. <laughs> nope. Yeah. That was faster than I thought. Oh, oh Kyle! <laughs> Let's go, boys! Donuts for all! You guys keep calling my pitches, man. I love you guys. Love you too, Kyle. Are you kidding me? Three minutes and 37 seconds. Six batters faced between Ponce and Lewigs. Three strikeouts, six outs. That was we, <laughs> we are the Golden Gods. <laughs> oh, Josh and I have three strikeouts on our official record. We are dancing up in the booth. Let's get it down to our party animals correspondent who has no career strikeouts in banana ball, Drake Toll. You can keep your donuts. I've got Peyton, the biggest party animals fan in the world, who is dressed. Peyton, who are you dressed as? You. Peyton is dressed as me. So I've got Drake Toll with me here, who looks like he's brought some of his friends. Peyton, who is this with you? This is all my friends here. We have Joyce, Wendy, Gavin, Aaron, Sarah, Emily, T, Natasha. Everybody's here. That was a whole roll call. Peyton, why are you a party animal and not a banana? The party animals just have more fun and the bananas suck. And the party animals have all the hotter guys. Yeah, she said it, not me. Let's go that one on the record. Tell me, what do you have in your hands here? So, my lovely friend here made me a birthday sign with all of these things to do on the back of it. And one of them is be interviewed by Drake Toll. So we're doing that. Which is me. Yeah. 
And another one was to get a soft smile from Gabe Howell, which we were able to get that done. That is my second favorite sign in the place here. I think my favorite sign is this one right here. Peyton has brought the party energy. Peyton said it, the guys are hotter, right? Yeah, for sure. The guys are hotter. Josh, Biko, I, this whole section right here in the front is a party. Peyton, thank you. You guys, party on. <laughs> thank you. Drake, Toll, Peyton, and company. A lot of good energy down there. There's too many dreams coming true tonight. <laughs> Swinging bunt. Hosley might beat it out. He does it. Good play by ball home. That guy can field his position. Good start to Ryan Rodriguez's night. Actually, what am I talking about? There are not enough dreams coming true tonight. I want every dream coming true. That's a good, good amendment, Josh. Oh, I can't stop smiling. This is one of the greatest nights of my entire life. I'm on top of the world right now. I'm not going to be able to go to bed. I'm not <laughs> going to be able to sleep. We're going to pull an all-nighter. We'll just keep streaming until... 7 p.m. tomorrow night on the East Coast with we have another banana ball game. Golly, this sport rocks. Robert Anthony Cruz quickly behind 0 and 2. As Mexi fires it well outside. And a cut and a miss. Really nice bender there from Rodriguez. He's got two quick outs. Yeah, and he's definitely looking for a redemption outing of sorts after coming in to close the ball game in game two last weekend in Gwinnett County and unfortunately allowing the Bananas not only to walk off the ninth inning, but walk off the game and come away with the win. So looking to work quick, get the punch outs and leave guys off the bases as he's only given up a one hit to the Bananas this year. Correct, and that hit was to Robert Anthony Cruz. It was the game tying single. Rodriguez certainly had some tough calls against him in the inning. He and his party animal brethren were pretty upset. More than anything about ball four to D.R. Meadows to start the inning. That, that was what started the momentum swinging the Nanners way. D.R. ended up scoring that tying run. Howell, who was hit by a pitch, scored the game winning run. Now Rodriguez trying to battle back into this count against Bill Leroy. And uses the 12-6 curveball there. Just a three pitch mix. Cutter, slider, 12-6 curve. He's right around 90 miles an hour with the cut fastball. And he's been really incredible. It steals a strike there. <laughs> I did not know he was up here. He's over. The right shoulder, Bill tries to check his swing. Did he? Grayson Wheeler down the first baseline doesn't see that Vincent Chapman is appealing to him, and he says, yes, he did. Leroy strikes out swinging. Rodriguez grabs a couple Ks in a 1-2-3 inning, and the momentum swinging the party animals way now. Big rebound outing. Mission accomplished for Rodriguez. Two minutes and 17 seconds with two strikeouts. Just like his catcher ball home, another... One of our geniuses of Banana Land. Guy would be in med school right this second if he didn't decide to pursue the professional banana ball career. S split is yanking my mic around, making sure that I'm celebrating. I don't know what. We're going to do some fan mail here. Well, Split just does what he does. He won't even let me in the frame. Wow, this is a long letter. Okay, I got to go quick here. Uh, hi, Bananas. My name is Jillian, and I'm in seventh grade. Recently, I ran into a problem. This year is my last year playing rec league baseball. That, that feels great, Split. And I have struggled with the decision of to keep playing. The Bananas story and the story of Jesse Cole have been so inspiring to me, and the team's kept me close to the game. I decided I would keep playing the game. That's what I'm talking about, Jill Jillian. Yeah, Jillian, okay. Uh, Jackson Olsen of the team I love. Nope, I'm reading out of order. Jackson Olsen is my favorite player, and I never forget to remember the quote, don't be afraid to be you. Shout out, Jackson. That is a great quote. I'm on the ticket lottery list for the Louisville game in August. Hopefully, I will get tickets. I have a hobby of making structures out of popsicle sticks. And my newest project is Grayson Stadium. I like that, Jillian. I like that a lot. I have added the images in this letter. Sorry they don't have color. That's okay, Jillian. We don't need color on these images. 
I don't know if you do responses, but I would love to hear what you think about my project. If Jackson Olsen could say something, that would be awesome. Jillian Higginbotham. Uh, Jillian, thank you so much. Really good work. I'm fired up to see what you can concoct with these popsicle sticks and historic race at stadium. I really like the feel of this little party hat on my head as well while I broadcast. Split, you might, you might be on to something. Top of the order now for Luix after he set down eight, nine, and 10 in the top of the fifth. Two strikeouts and a fly out. Now it is Hampton, Bloomer, and Skull. Reese, the switch hitting center fielder, takes his first at bat from the left side. From the right side, a double and a single. He's having a great night. It's a pitcher's pitch on 3 1. Fastball, low outside corner. Let's we'll see what Lewis goes to on the 3 2 with. Josh and I no longer calling his pitches. Boy, fastball just misses down and in. Pass ball on Leroy. I don't know what Reese, Reese Hampton did not know that the ball had gotten away from the man with the mask for the Nanners. Easily could have had two bases. He taps his chest, says, that's my bad. Yeah, very interesting base running from Reese Hampton. And the banana sprint defense can't do anything to fake him out either in the transfers. They've got to get it to all seven guys. So it's kind of fascinating that Reese only able to get one base out of it. And hopefully, hopefully that helps Kyle Lewigs in the sixth inning. Well struck ball, base knock for Bloomer. Reese Alexiades freshly inserted into right field as a howitzer for a right arm keeps Hampton at second base. Bloomer now two for three, singles in his last two trips to the dish. One to left, now one to right. And the party animals pushing the door open. Jake Skoll, gonna see if he can kick it in. Two on, nobody out. Skies it in the infield. Infield fly is called by Chris Walker. And that means Ryan Cox will try the trick play. Comes up empty. He's now one for two on the night. 39 for 45 on the season. Still a healthy lead. 11 ahead of Acuff and Baber. Check that. 10 ahead of Acuff, 11 ahead of Baber in the great trick play race. And because that play already ruled an infield fly, it won't be counted as a trick play missed for Ryan Cox either because the out was already automatic there. And why not try for it? That is perfect banana ball feel from Coxie as Cornette chops this one fair down the line. EJ tries to give it a leap and can't come down with the ball. And that will lead to a party animals run here in the sixth inning as Hampton comes across to score. Tough luck there for Cowboy Kyle. And as Hampton comes on in, and now the alley-oop. Hampton slams it home. This is March. Onions from the kid. Dunk City, population Reese Hampton. And now Vava will get to cut down the net. To celebrate the animals. Jumping out in front in the sixth inning with a run. The base running from Hampton. Scoring from second. Another look on what was a demon hop there for an incredible first baseman in Eric Jones Jr. Jordan Hussein pinch running for Bloomer. He went first to third. Now an 0-1 count on Chase Acuff. A ground out and a booming double tonight. This one to Cox, could be two, behind the back with the glove flip. Unbelievable trick play, twin killing to strand a man at third. With the way that one was hit, I thought Ryan Cox would go for the standard flip over to Jackson Olsen to get the quick double play, but no fear from the glove magician beating this one behind the back to Jackson Olsen, who was able to get that across the diamond and the Bananas limit the party animals to just one run in the top half of the sixth. An absolute beauty there. Get it down to Jesse Cole, time to clean the dish. Fans, you're gonna judge who does it best, whether it's Bethany 
or Cameron. And let's see what we got. Here we go. Uh, all right. All right, she's next. There we go. There's a little. This looks like just a lot of movement, but very little. Oh, she's going this side. What is happening now? All right. She's actually getting a little bit of a time. All right, all right, all right. There we go. There we go. All right, that's Bethany. Now, Cameron, let's see what you got. What is this move? This looks like a dad move. I'm just, what? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, oh, go, oh, jeez. What is happening? All right, all right. Now chest bumping. Oh, okay. All right, that's it. And it looks like absolutely no dishes get cleaned in this house. Fans, it's up to you who did it best. Is it Bethany? Oh. Is it Cameron? Somehow, Cameron did it best. Let's hear it for Cameron and Bethany. A little clean the dishes. Wow. Good work cleaning the dish, folks. Now let's get a peek at the new Party Animals pitcher. It will be Brett Helton, who has been doing most of his work as a starter on this tour. You see the 30 and two-third innings pitched more than anybody else. Now he comes in when the game matters most. He came in relief in Houston, Texas, and Sean flew through the start, but excluding that game, this is the first relief appearance for Brett Helton since August 19th of 2023. He had 31 total relief appearances last year for the Animals, was five great and save opportunities, and this is just one of those moves where the party animals are trying to throw their best guys as the innings get later and mean a lot more. Jackson Olsen starts hot here in the bottom of the sixth with a double to the left center gap. He extends his team lead for the Bananas. Yeah, that's his seventh two-bagger of the season. And really bold move going for two. Reese Hampton is a former 80 grade outfielder according to the scouting reports the Detroit Tigers had on him. And they drafted him in the 12th round in 2018. He's got a beautiful arm, but as Tyler Gillum says, pressure bursts pipes and Hampton fires high. Double for Olsen, Malachi Mitchell pinch running and now Hilton brings in Baber, Acuff, and Hampton. And this is a dynamic 6-2-2. <laughs> unique defensive alignment, it works! Baber's right there, he tries to get Malachi Mitchell, no one's covering second. But it'll be a hilarious first out here in the bottom of the sixth. How many times do you see the 6-2-2 shift just absolutely perfected like that. This one grounded straight to Dustin Baber, checked Malachi back to second, and still got the first down at first. Skull in hot pursuit, D.R. Meadows gave it a good poke, and it's gonna be out of the reach of the Animals right fielder. Flash is coming home. Acuff gets the relay, his throw cut off by Swan. Inning tying triple for D.R. Meadows, and he represents the inning winning run 90 feet away. D.R. Meadows with the perfect spot placement for that ball, hitting it into that triple's alley towards the Go Bananas fan wall. And it's the second triple for D.R. Meadows on this 2024 tour. Puts him 90 feet away from scoring the inning winning run as Brett Helton <laughs> snares this one on the line, points right to D.R. and checks him, and then fires it across Jason Swan at first. How about the showmanship from the former Pittsburgh Pirates minor leaguer? Imitates DR's celebration after backflips at center. And he's an out away of keeping this game tied. Dan Oberst won't let that happen. Bananas back out in front, three to two. It is Dan's tour leading 10th inning ender of the year. Hatton collected a walk up for the Bananas since they were in Minute Maid Park in Houston, Texas. Now becomes the first man to double digits in walk ups on the tour. And the Bananas celebrating this one pinata style. Stilt's not playing fair. Ziggy couldn't get there, but DR, who did the damage with the booming triple to right center, scores the inning-winning run. Gets to be the man 
to demolish the pinata. Jackson Olsen, unfortunately, comes away with no candy. He's full of sour grapes, understandably so. Oh, no, he did get a little something. He just wanted more. Let's get it down to the young professor. 3-2 ball game going to the seventh. Hum, babe. Just kidding. Switch everything up. We'll forget about the young professor because we have ascertained the man in the yellow tux, our fearless leader, Jesse Cole. And with Jesse down in front of the bleachers, back in Savannah after four straight weekends on like the road. How good does it feel Ladies to be back here, Jess? For the first time ever, this is the Banana Land. The energy Fim. from the crowd, and the guys are bringing some creativity today. A little March Madness, you're seeing pinatas, the water bottle flip. I mean, the guys are bringing it today, and this is coming from the players, too, so they're bringing some fun back to Savannah. Jesse, speaking of celebrations, we're seeing more home runs than ever lately in Banana Ball, but how about the bat flips and the celebrations we're seeing from guys after they're going deep all over the place? Place. You know, I think that's the next level of banana ball. We're trying to encourage people to celebrate and have fun, and they're taking it to, I mean, seeing what Rack did last week with unbelievable gymnastics and then home run, things I can't even imagine a body doing. He did that after hitting a home run. It's pretty fascinating, and it's, again, these guys are unbelievably athletic, so talented, and really, you never know what they're going to do next, and I get to be a fan, which is great to watch. Josh and I called pitches across two half innings in this game. We got all six batters out, three of them via strikeout. When will we get to start catching, Jesse? You know, that scares me in so many ways. I don't know what to think about that, but I can tell you, you guys know Banana Ball as well as anyone. So I, I, I trust you did a great job. That's amazing, six outs. I think the pitcher should actually have you be a part of this every single game. We'll see what the live chat thinks, but I think every <laughs> game you guys should call some pitches. Jesse, we are all on board, man. I mean, this is like... This is just about as much fun as I have ever had in the booth. It's been a blast. A 3-2 game, three innings left. What's going to happen? Well, it's going to come down to the end, I'll tell you that. But maybe you guys are calling pitches at the end. Then it gets really crazy. <laughs> Whoa! Sounds great, Jess. You have a great rest of your night, man. Love you, Biko. Love you, Josh. Love you, too. Love there it goes. The man in the yellow tux himself, Jesse Cole. Always great to hear his insight, and I love his idea about us calling pitches when the game matters most. He can't tease us with these ideas. <laughs> it's all we can think about. That's what this whole thing was built on. Fascinating defensive move for the Bananas. Jackson Olsen has been replaced by Zach Phillips at second base. Cowboy Kyle out for his third inning of relief. Well, look, we saw Zach Phillips play second base in Cooperstown, New York in the final game of the season. What happened when he came in at second base? laid out full extension and made a diving, run-saving catch for the Bananas. That's a fact. That was with Matt Wolf on the mound. Tanner Thomas hits this a mile high. Rack coming in, slides in an adventurous way to out number one here in the top of the seven. Not exactly a graceful route from Rack in left field, but comes in, and you've got to appreciate the style points. D.R. Meadows with the hand up flipping over him. Oh, there's a lot going on right there. Rack, the man who excelled in gymnastics as a kid, ends up tumbling on the ground, ends up sliding on his derriere. DR handles the acrobatics, naturally. Nothing makes sense in Banana Land. And a hot one, diving play! Cox to his feet! Laser beam across the diamond, didn't have a chance in the world to get the speedy Noah Fisher, who has his first hit of the night, and Cox thinks about how he could have possibly made that out, and I, I don't think yet that was in the cards. Nonetheless, it's just incredible that Ryan Cox got that ball in glove and kept it in the infield for the Bananas. Still a superb play. Now Bronson ball home. The first man Lewis faced out of relief back when Josh and I were calling pitches. We executed the strikeout. I repeat, Josh and I executed the strikeout. Rack charging in and has made both outs here in the top of the seven. Fisher back to first, and Dustin Baber will try his luck for a second time against Cowboy Kyle. He flew out in that top of the fifth. Something that I feel like has kind of gone under the radar with Dustin Baber on this world tour, currently riding a seven-game hit streak for the party animals. Impressive stuff out of the nine hole. Baber chugs the beer, and we'll need... Hope from Vincent Chapman getting to the right-handed batter's box. And now Cowboy Kyle on the mound is trying to start the clap. 
here in the 306th straight sold out Bananas or Party Animals game. The full capacity crowd joining in. Zach Phillips joining Luigs on the bump. And they're both dumping banana balls in mysterious liquid. I have a good idea what's coming next. Gabe Howell with the light, and it is fireball. Round three, Dustin Baber peppers it into left. He has himself a double as the throw from Rack offline. Bill backing it up. This time, instead of just one banana ball, two electric boogaloo. A wild sequence of events. You get two banana balls lit on fire, and Dustin Baber goes first pitch swinging down the line. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Phillips stays out at second base. Great piece of hitting there by Baber to lace a two-bagger on the flaming pitch from Philly. And now Jason Swan will swing it with two men in scoring position. The slider there to steal a strike from Lewix. This is a spot where historically Swan has been amazing. Batting 444 this year with the runners in scoring position and one of the top marks this year on the 2024 World Tour. His top two last year as well. This one back up the middle and Swan does what Swan does. Drives in Fisher, Baber trying to score as well. Amazing throw from Meadows. And Dustin is a dead duck. You do not run on the doctor. One run for the animals, but DR keeps it at just that. Excellent throw from DR Meadows, firing this one home and keeping the party animals from scoring multiple runs in the seventh inning. We salute all the service members here in historic Grayson Stadium. And from myself, Pico Scala, my broadcast partner, Josh Tolevsky, our entire BTV crew, and everyone else here gathered in the 912 for a beautiful Thursday night of Banana Ball. We pass that on to everybody watching on YouTube. We'll jump up to the broadcast booth because it is that special time. Just kidding. Plans change. We've seen that a couple times tonight. You see the fake pitch from Lewigs, the actual pitch from Phillips, and now we have made it up. That's Josh. This is Biko. Thank you all so much for spending your Thursday night with us in Virtual Banana Land. I still have my gift from Split on my head because I do not take these things lightly. Uh, it is time to give away a pair of shoes courtesy of our dear pals over at Zappos. You have to hit the link in the comments section, and then when it says buzzword, you will put in <laughs> Royal, Royal, like Zach Phillips was, a Kansas City Royal Z minor, minor leaguer. leaguer. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I kind of backed myself into a corner there a little bit, but we got out of it. You saved it. Don't we're worry. We're slippery. We're slipping and sliding. Oh, you've you've been masterful tonight. I'm just gonna say it right now. We're, we're not up. even done, but we're you've slipping been, and you've sliding. You've been masterful. <laughs> oh, right and I, I say that a little uh, bit because of the way you've called <laughs> some pitches. You know. <laughs> Right this back an, at just you. Just an additional pat on the back. Listen, I'm not the guy who said one-two change-up to Jason Swan. I wanted a high fastball. You said, no, we've got to go change-up here. Kyle said, you're a madman. Then he threw it, and he got his second strikeout of the one-two-three inning. That was you, John. You did that. You basically threw the change-up. You know, I want to build my guys up. He didn't seem the most enthused about his changeup. He never has been. I bet you he will be after tonight. Opposite field poke from Michael Deeb. He's having a heck of a ball game. Two for two. Had a walk-off sprint in the first. And he represents the inning tying run for a heartbeat while we take a look at the poke through the six hole. Malachi Flash, the kid Mitchell. Pinch running for vitamin D. Anytime Michael Deeb's going opposite field with his base hits, it's kind of a sign that he is 
dangerous out there for the Bananas. He's, of course, racking up the doubles as always, but once he's spraying it to all fields, he just feels so good about putting them in the lineup every day, especially in this cleanup hole. Brett Hilton out for his second inning of work. We'll check on Malachi, who is 14 for 15 in stolen base attempts, had not been caught since this last Sunday when Ballholm was able to nab him. Trying to swipe second. Bronson behind the dish again tonight. And a hot shot through the left side. Eric Jones Jr. is one for three on the night. He is three for three in quality at bats. He has hit nothing soft. Yeah, it's kind of the summary of the season so far for Eric Jones Jr. And now half of his total hits this season have been extra base hits. He's 16 total hits, eight of them for extra bases, four doubles and four home runs. How about Reese Alexiades? Super Reese goes from doing his best Clark Kent impersonation to racing in to try and save this game from sure party animals destruction. Whoever the voice actors were explaining to the crowd here in Grayson. that the party animals are destroying historic Grayson Stadium. They did a heck of a job. I've never heard anyone go that high pitched. Me neither. Whoever was supposed to give Alexiades his helmet and bat did not get the memo. So he gets the wrong bat, takes a ball, Oberst races out there, gives him the right piece of lumber, and we're ready to rumble. Fouled straight back. First plate appearance of the evening for Super Reese. And as you can tell there, he does not get cheated on his swings. No, he's always swinging hard, and the results are coming. Three of his last four hits have been doubles. Good take there, that one a hair below the knees. Sneaks a smell of his bat after the foul ball. Saw Skull doing that earlier, there's a barrel to right center. Another hard hit ball from Alexiades. Noah Bridges is pinch running over at first. He's racing home, he runs like the wind, and there was never a chance to get him. Super Reese Alexiades saves the day. Two run walk off double. And we have a 4 2 ball game in favor of the Bananas. <laughs> are these lawnmowers? I think these are lawnmowers. Flashes is going absolutely wild with Austin Krasminski on the controls. I don't know what that was supposed to be, but I love that celebration. Let's get it down to the young professor. We're going to the eighth. Nanner's up by two points. And that's maybe easy to do if you can see, but we're going to see if they can win a dance off blindfolded. We call this one Dancing in the Dark. I've got Anthony, Russ, Andy, and Jeff. They're going to give their best moves, and we're going to see who does it the best. Fellas, let's go ahead and put our blindfolds on. Make sure we can't see anything at all. Shark, hit that music. Boys, let's see what you got. Get it. Oh, there's some good dancing going on. Good dancing. Oh, man, we're down to three. We're down to three. We're down to two now. I've got Jeff, and I've got Andy. We are down to two, and I need to see your absolute best stuff here. We're Andy and Jeff. We're Andy and Jeff. Who's it going to be? Who is going to win the dance-off? Oh, my God. Hey, hey Jeff. Jeff, I'm, I'm tapping you on the shoulder. Uh, you didn't lose, but you've been out here for about the last minute all by yourself, man. You are the winner of Dancing in the Dark! Fantastic work from our champion dancer there, Zach Phillips, after throwing one pitch tonight with the banana ball on fire. 
will take over in earnest from Cowboy Kyle Lewis. Yeah, this is the 12th appearance of the tour for Zach Phillips, which ties him for the Bananas team lead. And last weekend, kind of polar opposite outings that we saw. In the first one, Zach Phillips gave up six hits and six runs and had a 10-minute inning on the mound for the Bananas. Then comes out in the, in the weekend's finale, sets the party animals down. He, they go three up, three down. And Zach Phillips gets out at the inning in one minute and 36 seconds. That is the beauty of Banana Ball. You simply never know what the ding is going to happen. Top of the order for the animals. Hampton working on an excellent evening. Two for two, a double ball four sprint, as well as a run scored. Now he grabs his second ball four sprint of the game. Well, gets away from Leroy. Hampton's going to slam the brakes at second. Ryan Cox goes over to cover third. Reese was thinking about trying to extend it until he saw the banana shortstop manning the next base that seemed to be empty for a heartbeat. And again, we saw that's what got the party animals in trouble in game two in Gwinnett County last week and not having a man occupying third base. DR getting up to third because of it. And even the bananas learning from those party animals mistakes as you saw Coxie start to rush over to man that bag. Phillips spent four years in the Kansas City Royals minor league organization while I hear Shark play one of my infamous <laughs>, laughs throughout the stadium. Just, oh boy. <laughs> you just can't make this stuff up. Nice barrel there from Bloomer. Well out of the reach of Meadows. Hampton can jog home from second. Bryson's thinking about three bases. Throw from Olsen on the run, on the money, but not in time. And Bloomer's fired up, down two points. He has the party animals in a prime position to creep back within one. And here comes round three. Reese Hampton, can he nail the flip? No. But can he flip the table? No. I would like to see this every single game for the rest of the year until someone nails one of these two flips. I don't need both, I just want one. I don't think I'm asking for a lot. Again, Bronson Bauholm studied astrophysics. Don't you <laughs> think he can uh, kind of help these guys with the formula here, figure out the perfect flip? Hey, how about Bryson Bloomer's ball game? We talked about it across his last two trips to the dish, both of them ending in singles. Hadn't had an extra base hit on the season, then he Joins the extra base hit party with an exclamation point. Guy's got a lot of pop. Led the 2021 Coastal Plain League champion bananas in home runs with six of them across the summer. That was just in the regular season. Then he put a seventh out in the decisive game three of the championship right here in Grayson. Moonshot. Out to left on a bender. Remember it like it was yesterday. Nice bender there from Phillips to get school swinging. Another look at it here. Really nice slider. Philly throws four seam, two seam, and cut fastballs. Works in the slider, curveball, and changeup. Diverse arsenal. Here's Cornette. Ranks that one foul. Look out, folks. Good thing we've got a net over there. That thing was smoked. Two runs driven in on the evening for Cornette. He's tied atop the leaderboard. Even Steven with Skoll in front of him. 20 apiece. Boomer leads off third. Nice bender there. That was fouled off of Cornette. Bloomer running home just in case, but it'll be a 2-2 count. And a fun trick play attempt by Zach Phillips, at least trying it on the foul ball and, and practicing, trying to field the hop. It looked like under his legs, kind of like Tanner Thomas and Reese Hampton have caught balls in the outfield under their legs. We love the attempt. Practice makes perfect. Big part of banana ball right there. Tight slider. Fouled away, we'll get another 2-2. Yeah, great pitch there from Zach Phillips. You've got Dalton Cornett out in front of the pitch. I think now you try and speed up his bat a little bit here with the count 2-2. 
Look out, Emerson. Holy moly. The iron horse of BTV had to jump ship there. That thing ended up getting trapped under the camera. Third 2-2. Two -two. And it nearly clips DC3. Jackknifes out of the way. We'll get a payoff. <laughs> All smiles from the third year party animal. Another bender, another foul ball. Already eight pitches in this at bat between Cornette and Zach Phillips. And of course, last weekend he had a 13 pitch plate appearance that ended in a ball four sprint against Ryan Kellogg. That tied the longest. Look out, Emerson! <laughs> M-Doggy has thrown up her hands in disbelief, <laughs> almost possibly aggression, because of Cornette's attacks. That'll be called strike three. Beautiful payoff pitch with the Bananas having the infield in. A well-struck fly ball could have been Cornette's second sack fly of the evening, and that's something you do not see very often, only his fourth strikeout of the tour there. And oftentimes it's DC3 hacking away when he's striking out. Rarely do you see him punch out looking. Billy wins the battle. Now he has to defeat Chase Acuff to limit the damage to just the one run. Acuff, a double sandwiched in between a couple ground balls, the latter of which was a beautiful 6-4-3 trick play double play. Initiated by Cox at short. Alexiades in pursuit makes the call and the catch. One run for the party animals. They strand Bloomer at third. And they will need to keep the bananas off the board. Try and pull within a point before heading to the ninth inning. Despite a longer Minutes per inning mark from Zach Phillips there. Impressive job pitching out of a jam and stranding Bloomer on third there as he had reached with no outs there in the top of the eighth. Yeah, strikeouts of Skull and Cornette, the three and four hitters, when they both could have pushed Bloomer home with an out. Bryson runs very well, and then Nickoff ends up flying out. Turn historic Grayson Stadium yellow. 20th banana ball game of the tour here. Bananas 11 and 8 after being swept in the series to kick this off back in Tampa, Florida at the beginning of February. They rattled off five straight series victories, including a sweep here in Savannah. Party Animals took two out of three this past weekend up in Gwinnett County in the Atlanta area. And the Nanners trying to bounce back in the win column and extend what is currently a three victory lead in this tour. So great to be back in the birthplace of Banana Ball. The 133rd game ever played. I'm sure, Jesse, that makes you pretty emotional. Makes sense. I'd be emotional too if I were him. Brett Helton will be out for his third inning of relief. He's given up walk offs in the sixth and the seventh. Came in with with a tie game. Now the Nanners up two points, and this is the time where a guy who late last year was as big a reason as anybody that the Animals rattled off nine straight victories to steal the tour from the Bananas. Helton had three complete games throughout that nine game winning streak. A leader on this team, a veteran on his second world tour. And that's a heck of a play by Chase Acuff to start this inning on the right foot for Helton and company. Sliding over to his right, goes down to a knee, and makes a perfect throw across the diamond to get Rack a good base runner. A better play by Chase Acuff. Really quick exchange. You saw Rack still nearly beat the wrap. A firm throw across the diamond. That guy can hustle. 
and he can bustle. Now Bill Leroy, it is 7-8-9 for the Nanners here in the bottom of the eighth. That does not mean that Helton has a break at all though. Leroy hitting 375 with a 475 on base percentage in the eight hole. I mean, those are video game numbers. He's been above tour average when you look at the OPS plus numbers as well. 100, of course, tour average bill. 138 mark, 38% better than the tour average hitter this season. This one struck well, but far too much launch angle out to center. Reese Hampton behind the back in a huge spot. He comes up with a fantastic trick play. Ninth trick play of the tour from Reese Hampton in center field, getting this one behind the back. And now the Bananas bring Dakota Stilts all Britain up to the plate with two outs. And we have got a microphone on him. Stilts, let's what? get this thing going, man. What's up, Biko? Can you hear me good? Oh, we got you loud and clear, brother. That's what I'm talking about. I'm going to give you a big wave. Hey, hey. What's up, hot stuff? <laughs> Hey, let's kick off a rally here, huh? Dude, I'm, I'm one for eight on the season. I think that's the numbers. I gotta do something. Oh, my goodness. He pulled the string on you. <laughs> and scoot up in this box. See if I'll throw it again. Good take. These new stilts, I gotta break them in right. Yeah. That's right. low. Now we just need to get the ball in play. Oh! He nailed you, Stilts. Oh my goodness. Another hit by pitch across your illustrious four-year banana ball career. You are as large a target as any of these pitchers have ever seen. And they're gonna leave you on the bases. Let's do it. Do what? I'm mic'd up. Yeah, I can't hear you. <laughs> Should I steal? No. I don't think so. But I love the confidence. <laughs> I'm not yeah. against it. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I can't hear you, Viro. I can't hear you. <laughs> that doesn't get the message. Stilts can only hear Biko and Josh. And that's only, the only Biko and Josh. That's all you need to hear, buddy. You're the inning tying run. It's a good blink there by Coxie, two one count. I mean, you gotta get on your horse if the ball's in play. And you gotta get on your horse if ball force fired here. 100%. Huh. What was the insight you just got from Byro still? <laughs> uh oh! Get moving still, you've got third! Wow! First to third speed from Dakota Stilts Albritton. Let's go, baby, breaking in the new Stilts. Nice piece of hitting there on the double from Coxie. Biko, what are the odds I score right here? Very high, because <laughs> D.R. Meadows is coming up to the dish. It's a good pitch there by Helton, firm fastball. Oh, right tired, there, 91, I hear you there still. You've been doing a lot of work out there. Healthy hack and Helton one strike away from surviving this inning. And if there's anything Helton wanted to do here against DR, it's get ahead of the count as DR batting 438 against Helton on the year. That's a good fight there from the doctor on a front door bender. We'll have another 0-2 offering. Stilts on the mic is the inning tying run. Cox on second is the inning winning run. My legs is on fire, Biko. Way to tough through it, man. Cut and a miss. Hilton wins the battle with the changeup. Dakota, thank you so much for joining us. That was a blast. See you later, Biko. Love you. Love you too, dude. Here's the young professor which means it's time 
to cast our gaze upon the scoreboard. Heading into the ninth, the score is three points for the party animals, four points for the Savannah Bananas. But here's the thing about the game of banana ball. In the final inning, every run counts for a point. That means the ever dangerous party animals are not out of it yet. On the other hand, the bananas need just three outs to shut it down and pick up the victory. Ladies and gentlemen of Savannah, Georgia, welcome to the final inning. There's a lot to break down here as we enter the ninth inning. The party animals won the point in the eighth, one run to nothing, so they have pulled within one. It is 4-3, the Nanners out in front as they turn to their best pitcher, Danny Hosley, to try and shut it down. You got a good look at the ring dudes, letting all the folks know here in Grayson Stadium that this is indeed the final inning. We love the confidence and stilts on the bags to stay out there and not be pinch run for by Brandon Crosby, but on the double from Ryan Cox, definitely could have tied the inning if Crosby, who runs like the wind, was out there. And instead, it is a one point lead for the Nanners compared to two. Yeah, that's exactly right. You pinch run Brandon Crosby and he most likely comes around to score on the Ryan Cox double and you keep your two point lead with a little bit of insurance here. On the bright side though, it's the Bananas throwing out the best closer we have ever seen in the history of Banana Ball. Danny Hosley this season, six for seven in his save opportunities and he's only allowed one ball four sprint this season always pounds the zone, and he struck out 25% of the hitters he's faced this tour. Tanner Thomas leads it off, six, seven, and eight for the Animals. Peter outside from Hosley, he's about 91 to 93 miles an hour with the fastball. His best pitch is the Vulcan changeup, and he will mix in the 12-6 curveball as well, as you see the changeup catch the top of the zone there. There's the 12-6 curve. Hosley jumps ahead. And we've just seen this matchup so many times between Hosley and Tanner Thomas. You just continue to pound breaking balls here against Thomas and, and get him to swing and chase. Cut and a miss. Spikes the change up. It's going to be a foul ball. Check that. We'll get another 2-2. Two -two. Thomas just barely able to get a piece. One for three on the night, a double back in the fourth inning. And takes that one for called strike three. Top outside corner of the zone. Certainly a tough pitch to be rung up on. I mean, in the ninth inning with a 2-2 count on you, you've got to be able to protect there, and if it's a pitch that's that close, for Tanner Thomas, you've got to just try and stick the bat out and at least foul it away. Noah Fisher gets fisted. Dalton Malden freshly into the game behind the back. EJ with the scoop. <laughs> How about the trick play from the Songbird of our generation? Dalton Malden with no fear whatsoever after being immediately put into this ball game and going with the trick play for the second out in the inning. You don't even want to put the inning tying run on first base and the game tying run at that. That was gutsy. The party animals are going to call upon their golden batter and send Reese Hampton up to the plate. A strikeout looking, a jam sandwich, and now one of the best hitters we have ever seen in banana ball against one of the best pitchers we've ever seen in banana ball. Party Animals trail by one point. The Bananas one out away from winning this game. Healthy hack and a miss at an elevated fastball. We saw Reese hit a very similar pitch out of Alec Box Stadium on the campus of LSU two weekends ago. This is one of those matchups historically in Banana Ball. You never know which way it is going to go between Hosley and Hampton. And it's Reese with the edge here now with the count at three and one. A ball four sprint is fired. He will be taking off and turning on the Jets, trying to get in the scoring position. And there he goes. He will slam the brakes. About 40% of 
On the way up to second base. So the golden batter for Ballholm puts the tying run aboard. Hampton with superb speed. Three for three in his stolen base attempts on this young tour. See if he tests the arm of Bill Leroy, and now the fate of the game is in the hands of Dustin Baber. Double down the left field line his last time as Hosley pours in a fastball for strike one. And Dustin Baber on the season against Danny Hosley, hitless in three plate appearances. Strike two, Leroy checks on Hampton, who scampers back and is safe standing. Party Animals down to their final strike. Osley getting the folks here in Grayson Stadium on their feet. The 0-2, caught in a miss. Osley does the job with the changeup. And the Bananas eke it out, four points to three. Jump ahead, 12 and eight now on the tour. Despite that game tying run getting placed on first with the ball four sprint, Danny Hosley on three straight pitches, fans Dustin Baber, and now the Bananas improve to four and zero oh here in Grayson Stadium in 2024. We'll see if they can make it a perfect five and zero. Oh tomorrow night, same place, same time. Before we all pack it up and get the only Saturday off across this entire Banana Ball World Tour from February 8th all the way to October 12th. What starts in Tampa ends in Miami. Boy, oh boy, are we excited for that. But, boy, oh boy, are we excited for another battle tomorrow night and to chop this up about this one this evening. Josh Talevsky, Biko Scala, thank you all so much for spending your thirsty Thursday with us here in virtual Banana Land. Heck of a ball game. Nanners jumped out 2 nothing early. Party Animals instantly responded with two straight points. It was 2-2 two two for a while, but then points in the sixth and the seventh for the Nanners to jump ahead 4-2. to two. Party Animals score one in the eighth, but cannot close the entire deficit. Again, what's been the Achilles heel of the Party Animals this year has been the bullpen. So obviously they try and change things up entering this series here in Savannah. They throw out Dalton Ponce for the start and throw some of the guys who are still trying to figure it out in Zach Blankenship and Ryan Rodriguez out early. And they pitch clean innings from you. Yeah. Then right when you think you're going to one of your best guys late in the game to keep this game close, for Brett Helton, unfortunately, he just did not have it. Allowed multiple runs across the first two frames, and the Bananas able to walk them off with six hits. And that's just how it went for the party animals. Yeah, it, it's funny. I mean, if you're Mike Vivasis, you're trying to move Brett Helton, who we talked about tonight, was one of the best pitchers on last year's tour, especially once he got moved into the starting rotation. He hasn't had uh, amazing success very early on in this tour. The sample size is small for everybody, although it's larger for him than anyone else. He's leading the tour in innings pitch, so you move him to the most important innings of the ball game, and unfortunately for Helton and the Animals, the Bananas are able to capitalize on him. I mean... What job by Noah Nisnik at the start for the Nanners, and then Cowboy Kyle Lewigs coming in after that. Zach Phillips gets beat around a little bit, but is 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 not too shabby, just giving up the one run in the eighth. And then Danny Hosley, what more can you say about one of the best pitchers we've ever seen in this sport? I mean, he is absolutely disgusting and just has such command of those three pitches out there on the mound, knowing exactly where to place them. And at the end of the day, I think that's another recurring theme that we're seeing this season. It's pitch location amongst the pitchers. And for guys like Dalton Ponce, Zach Phillips, and Brett Helton, who don't allow a lot of ball four sprints and pride themselves as strike throwers, sometimes they're just leaving them a little too over the plate rather than going for corners outside parts of the plate, low and in, and other sorts of these spots. Not exactly hitting them. They leave them over the plate a little too much, and they kind of get banged around. Yeah, that is, that is a fact right there. So we will see if the party animals can finally get their first win in Grayson Stadium here in 2024 tomorrow night. 7 p.m. Eastern will be first pitch. 6.30 p.m. we will kick off 
our pregame show. It is quite a 180 from last year when the party animals went 13-5-2 and two against the bananas. The reason why they won the tour by one game, I mean, every single game counts the same when you play another team 69 times, but their domination here at in the Bananas' home park was the biggest reason that they won the tour last year. And what we saw was that the party animals just overall pitched better in Grayson Stadium than the Bananas last season. So far, that just unfortunately hasn't been the case, and it was kind of evidence once again tonight. And for the party animals as well, the bats were also a lot more lively than the Bananas bats at home. And so far we saw tonight the Bananas rack up more hits and a lot of extra base hits at that as well. Yeah, well, this is a retooled Bananas pitching staff talking to Jake Skoll and Reese Hampton last weekend in Gwinnett. They said the pitching caliber on the Bananas has been upped, and that makes it a lot more fun for former minor leaguers like them and, and guys who have played at the top level in independent professional baseball. They said it makes the sport a lot more fun, but we are seeing that the Bananas, because of their increased skill in pitching, are now the better hitting team. Once again, we're about 20% into this tour, but that's been the case thus far. Well, it's really interesting because overall, going back to last year and looking at this year, part in a lineup is very similar and this team knows how to hit we've seen a very consistent yeah. lineup from last year into this year and overall i still think the party animals all are the better offense overall and with that being said when you've got one team that you know is an offensive you know steamroller you've got to stack the opposing team a little more <laughs> deep with the pitching so it's kind of the perfect balance that we're seeing in banana ball at the moment it has been thrilling thus far and the Bananas lead the tour with a, a four-win advantage. They are 4-0 in historic Grayson Stadium. So we'll see if they can make it 5-0 tomorrow night. Before we shut this thing down, we do have a pair of shoes to give away courtesy of our good pals over at Zappos. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Riley Job car riley job car congratulations on your free pair of shoes courtesy of zappos we're going to give away another one tomorrow night because the people at zappos are simply the best human beings on the planet uh let's shut this thing down and shout out our cast and crew along the way our first base camera woman dodging not just one but two foul balls both from dalton Cornette, both in the same at bat she is tremendous, the Iron Horse of BTV. Across the diamond, Lex Fowler becoming an Iron Horse himself as well. On the high home, Sophia Peach, excellent work. High first, dominated by Jeff Haynes, another legend of BTV. On the low home, Jackson Hamilton, great to have Jackson back in the mix. Center field, Daniel Boros. Daniel, good work out there on the scaffolding. Our utility tonight, making up folks all over the place, Nick Keldy, a.k.a. Cow Boy Kiggity, you bet your bottom dollar. On the wireless, Jux Justin Gordon. Justin Gordon flying all over this place. Excellent work from Justin. Down in the control room, finally, not hundreds of miles away from us. Just a hop, skip, and a jump. Our director, Chris Haynes. Hainesy, baby. Excellent work. Our technical director, Kylie Sadamka, the best in the biz, wherever you put her. On the replay, the veteran Keegan Woods, that guy dominates on the replay machine. Audio handled by Katie Duke on the ones and the twos, killing it. The scorebug Quanzi, one name. You know him, you love him. He's superb. On the graphics, Julia Massey. And on the statistics being updated on said graphics, Mikey O'Connor, the best dynamic duo you will ever find. In the chat, our moderators, Colbyte underscore, as well as Scott Thompson. Thank you to our cake. Club and Melissa Beal, Melissant Beans Supreme, as well as our YouTube King Zach Bro, Zacharias, and our Italian rap scallion, the video legend himself, Chris Sachi. A special thanks to Drake Toll, our party animals correspondent, who looks depressed over to the left of us in the booth. Dalton Ponce for popping on the mic and letting us call pitches for him. Same thing goes for Cowboy Kyle Lewigs and Jesse Cole and Stilts for slapping the mics on as well. Uh, the straw that stirs the drink of Banana Ball is our coordinating producer, Chad Roos. <laughs> Chad Roos. Chad Roos. Chad Reese. Roos, baby. Roos just kind of sounds <laughs> awesome. Uh, Reese is very cool, too. He is not happy. He is not happy with me. I am so sorry, Mr. Roos. A uh, little Arch Pongle situation going on here. Uh, thank you so much to our executive producer. Producers, the Emily, Jesse, Carrie Cole, as well as Jared Orton. Josh Tulevsky on the color commentary. You killed it. Biko Scala, I can't wait until we're calling pitches in the ninth inning. Hum, baby. We're going to do it tomorrow night. Thank you so much to everybody who tuned in. Bananas win this one 4-3. to three. We will see you tomorrow night. 6.30 p.m. Eastern pregame, 7 p.m. first pitch. Let's do it then. And until then, we'll see you later.